Howdy. Now it's time to add a database layer to our web application. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use Azure's managed Postgres service. And we could use that or we could also we could do our own. We could manage our own Postgres service if we wanted to. We could create a virtual machine and just add, you know, add install Postgres, you know, do all the configuration, make sure, you know, backups are good. Um and just have to maintain everything. Whereas with the managed Azure Postgres database, it basically takes out all of that, that configuration that we have to do and it just does everything for us. You know, so we don't have to be like very, you know, high intense database administrators or administrators. Um, you know, we can basically just say, let's let's spin up a Azure database and, and let's 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 just get rolling, you know. And it's just, it's a lot more, it's easier to, to manage and keep, just keep your application up and running without you having to, you know, hire people to, you know, configure your database and make sure everything is completely correct. Um, you can have Ant Azure basically manage that for you, uh, which is very, very nice, uh, to be honest with you. Um, so let's, let's, let's do that now. So let, let's go to our, our resource group that we've been working with. You know, so we're getting some things in here. So, you know, we've got our, our Redis cache now, you know, virtual machine, um, scale set, things like that. So let's, um, let's go to Postgres. And so, so one thing with the managed Postgres is we, it does give us the ability to configure some things a little bit, but but not that much. Um, if you're used to Postgres, th there's certain like PG settings that it, it won't even allow you to touch. Like like uh, I think like shared buffers is one, you know. So you can't even touch that. Um, it won't let you. You also don't have super user access. Azure reserves that for themselves, um, which is which is fine most of the, most of the time. Uh, but it also offers streaming replication. Um, point in time recovery. So backup and restores are, are very efficient. Um, and you don't actually pay for backups. The backups are actually included um, for free based on how much storage you provision. Um, but let's, let's, uh, let's start creating one and we can kind of explain the different um, things it has to offer. So there's two types you can use, the single server or the hypersc hyperscale. We're going to go over the single server. The hyperscale is going to be for extremely critical, high intense loads. Um, I haven't had to use that in production yet, so we're just going to go over a single server for now. But if you want to read about hyperscale on Citrus itself, uh, uh, you can. But it basically allows you to shard your application a little bit. So let's create. So again, you're going to see some common things. Our subscription, resource group, we're going to create our resource group. And then we're going to do our, our server name. Let's just say chorus foo database. And this is going to be a technically a, a public URL or endpoint. Um, so it needs to be available, just like a domain. Um, our data source, we're going to do none, but if you had a if you already had an existing backup of an Azure managed database, you can, you could, you could create an instance off of that. Uh, we're going to keep it in US East since our whole entire application has been in US East. We want to keep our database in US East as well. And you can select the version and you might not, you might notice depending on when you watch this video right now, Postgres 12 is the latest version, but you see it's not offered here. So that's because Post or Azure does stuff in the background with with Postgres that, to on, on the versions. Um, we don't really know what they do, but so they haven't done it yet for Postgres 12. So the latest version we can choose is 11. So let's choose that, and then we've got our compute and storage. All right, so there's three different types you can use. You can use basic, 
which is up to two virtual cores. So the basic would be good for just like, you know, testing and development. Then you've got general purpose, you know, up to 64 cores. Uh, and you have predictable input, input, input output performance. And then you have memory optimized. So you can kind of just choose, choose what uh, best suits your needs. And you can kind of see here what the prices are, which is pretty cool, um, how that updates. Um, so you can change the slider. As you change the slider, the, the price updates. Um, but let's let's choose a general purpose for now. And let's just do um, two cores. And our storage will keep at 100 gigs. So th th this is another important thing. So let's say when we first sp start up our application, we're like, we want 8,000 gigabytes. We want t eight, 8 terabytes of data right now. You know, if we did that and then two weeks down the line, we realized we didn't need that much storage, it, you cannot actually scale that back down. So once you create this, this database instance and you say 800 gigabytes, you can't go back down to like 400. You, you are literally stuck at the 4,000. Um, so that's that's happened to me before in production environments on large databases. So uh, p take note of that. So you want to make sure that you don't provision too much because else you can't scale back down. And what you have to do is like do PG dumps of every database that's in, in inside your cluster and then PG restore them essentially. So, so be careful about that. Um, but let's do... I don't want that much. All right, we'll do 117 gigs. That's that's easy enough. Um, and then the input output that you have, your input output operations on your file system is based on the storage you have. So you see how I have 351. If I increase this, it's going to increase that as well. So the larger the database you get, the more input output operations you get. Um, so let's change that. And then you can have you can have storage auto growth. So what will happen with the storage auto growth is, let's say you have a hundred gigabytes right here provisioned, but you know you're getting a lot of data and you're you're reaching ninety nine gigabytes. You know, it will automatically it, the 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 your Postgres system will automatically grow in size. So it, your application won't go down. You know, your, your, your web application just won't, like, shut down and everybody get 500 errors or, you know, page not found or something. It'll automatically scale scale up. Um, so just you can use that if you need to. But remember, if you scale up, you can't scale back down. And then a backup retention period. So by default, uh, Azure will give you seven days of backup. So you'll have seven backups every day for, for you have a, you have a backup each day for the last seven days. You can increase that to say twenty days if you want, and the backups are free up until you get to a hundred. Like so, so if we've provisioned one hundred and six gigs here, that means then we have one hundred and six gigabytes of of backups that we we can store. Now then you have backup redundancy options. You can choose geo redundant if you want. If you want to learn more about that, you can. You can, um, but just basically store, store the data outside of a diff, uh, different uh, region. We're just going to keep local for now. So right now, if we choose this, we are going to spend one hundred forty-two dollars a month on this managed Postgres instance. So we got so we've got that. So let's do a admin username. So this is going to be our, our default user that gets created with um, this managed instance, and so we can actually log into our, our our Postgres instance. So let's set some username and password. Got that. So now we can review and create. So good, good, let's create. And this may take a few minutes. Yeah, so in the way it does, um, 
backups and everything, you could, you have point in, point in time recovery. So you can say like, all right, I want to I want to you know go back to like something happened today's you know Monday, and something happened on Sunday. You know I don't know like like somebody screwed up our database on Sunday. It's just it's very bad. So we want to you know go back to a point in time of Saturday night. Um, so Azure allows you to do that very easily. Um, so you, you can just basically click restore from you know Saturday night. And it's it's very quick to do that, um, and all that, and and the backups that that Azure takes for you are only you, they can only be used inside of the Azure platform itself. You can't actually just take the backups that are done from Azure and 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 export them outside into its own file. Um, so if you do need that, you need to, if you do need to like have backups off site somewhere. You still would need to do a a PG dump of of the databases um, to do everything. Um, another thing with with this managed service is there is no server for you to log into, so you can psql into your database because it basically just gives you an endpoint. So there's no like virtual machine that you can go into and change, you know, cert certain things like your HBA file. Um, you can't you can't change that. It just doesn't exist um, because Azure takes care of all that for you. You know, you can create from from our backup that you created. You can also create a, you know, you can take that backup and create a whole new instance of it. So, say you want to spin up a new, you know, you've got a backup and you want to create a whole new server, a managed Postgres server. Essentially, you can take that backup and create it from from that backup. All right. So our instance is created. So let's go to the resource. So let's look at a few things. So, Postgres 11, server name. So let's go to, let's look at a few things. Um, connection security. Uh, so, so by default, nobody can get into our database yet. Um, I can't get into it, so nobody can get into it. Um, but we don't want to deny public access. So, so we need to either set up virtual network rules or a firewall rule. So what we'll do is we're going to allow my IP um, and only my IP to access this, this machine. So let's add that there. So now this is saying that I'm where the, the place I'm located at right now, I can access this virtual machine in only this place. So let's save that. So while that's saving, so you can go to here, connection strings, and it kind of gives you some some defaults to go off of. So if you're using a PHP application, you can have it kind of gives you what what you need to connect to the database. Same thing with Node and things like that. So since we're going to be using PSQL in just a sec, let's let's copy this and let's paste it. Um, so let's, and the, the things in the, in, the, in the brackets here, that's what we need to enter. Um, I'm going to remove the password because then what it'll do, it'll actually ask us for the password once we get in. Um, since we haven't created any databases yet, there's always the Postgres database. So we can, we should be able to just log in to, to that. Um, all right, so... It defaults when you create the instance or the, the service. It defaults to port five four three two, and then we have our host here. Perfect. So let's see if our connection is. is hopefully, this is saved. Let's see if we can actually access our database. Ask for a password. And boom. We got into our database. You can ignore this warning. My PSQL right now is on version 10, but our server is 11, so it's giving us that warning. Um, but yeah, so so now we're in we're in our database. You know, so we can list all the current databases that are in here by default. So by default, you can see some databases that are already there. So let's maybe we want to create a new database. Let's, cr let's create foobar. 
and now we have FUBAR, and I'm the owner. You see how you have the Azure super user here? You know, we can't do anything with that user. Um, but our user can still create create, create roles, log in, and, and, and everything else. So, you, um, so don't worry about that. Um, so perfect. So let's let's get out of that. Here's our are your are your basically your, your Postgres settings, your PG settings, you know. So you can change change some of these. This is what would be in your like configuration file when you when you manage Postgres yourself. That that's what's here. So you can change you can change these to suit your needs. Um, but they don't have everything, you know. Not everything like like shared buffers is one thing that they don't have. You can't you can't change that. So that's all up to them. Um, so, so keep that in mind when you are, uh, are doing this. All right. So the other thing we'll go over is, is replication. So when you're setting up the, a database in general, like we've got the master database here. So what will happen is everything from our web, web application will go to this master database. So anytime we, we write to the database or we read from the database, we're going to be hitting this this master database here, uh, but it's but it's a good practice to to have a read replica of of, of your database. So so we're going to add a replica. So that what the read replica does is, you know, we can have our master database, and then we can have a read replica as well. And what the read rec, read replica will do is any database queries that just read from the database will hit this replica. And then any writes to the database, anytime that inserts or updates happen, it'll go to the master. So it's a way to just like disperse the traffic a little bit and make your, your application a little bit more performant. So if you want to add a replica, you can add it. And you're going to get charged also, you're going to get charged the same for this read replica as you do for your master. Let's just do... Do that. Let's do US East, and we'll just keep it the same. So let's do OK, and and now it's now it's deploying that. Um, all right, so that may take a little while to to create, but that's basically all we have to do to go over the managed Postgres service that Azure offers. Uh, so next thing we'll go over is. Later on, we're going to go over like storage, monitoring of, of our whole application, um, you know, how to do snapshots, different pricing, how to use calculator, how to set up our domain, and different things like that. So make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any of the future videos.